Arab Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and I think we may have gotten our audio problem resolved. Do let me know about that in the comments section there. And uh, we are gearing up. This evening is a very important broadcast here. We are seeing some developments that are happening in and around Israel, dealing with Syria, Russia, the United States, as the uh, title of our uh, broadcast on Livestream.com there, where we have our Israeli News Live channel under uh, Stephen Denoon or Stephen Ben Denoon. Uh, we are seeing a lot of issues going on. It is truly a chess match between the United States and Russia. And of course, several other key players in the region, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, a lot of different reports. If you go to our Facebook page, Israeli News Live, uh, we also have in there many of the articles that we'll be speaking about tonight, Kuwaiti News, some of the things that they've brought out, uh, RT News, TASS News, uh, Israel National News, etc. We have posted many of the links on the things that are going on here. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go right in though to start with, before we get started in the issue with Russia, I want to take you immediately to Arut Shiva, that's Israel National News and share with you again, because the terror campaign, the intifada that is going on in Israel has not let up, not even a single bit, not a single day since it actually began. As we shared with you when we were there in Israel uh, not too long ago there, we were already seeing this. We saw the first casualties of it there photographed, uh, not even realizing that it was a terrorist attack that the man had been stabbed with the blood on his feet in the photo that we had taken ourselves. Um, Anyway, the uh, three border police are hurt in a car terror uh, attack near Hebron. Uh, and I'll just quickly kind of give you a little bit. This is just some of the aftermath there. I apologize for that there for those of you watching on live stream there. Anyway, let me go back. Let's let that play one more time again there for you, those that are watching there. This is just the scene of the event there where a, uh, there was an Arab man there, uh, two of them actually wielding knives coming to attack. Uh, and, and then this is near... Um, um, I think it's near Hebron, yes, Hebron, or Hebron in English is the way you say it there. Uh, they did kill one of the men that was wielding a knife. I'll be able to show you that here in just a moment. But the article reads here, three border police were reported hurt in a car terror attack uh, at uh, Beit uh, Enun Junction near Hebron. One victim suffered head wounds that were initially described as moderate, but of course they were updated to, uh, to uh, as his condition deteriorated to very serious as well. Uh, two, two others, one male, one female, also from the border police, were lightly hurt and taken to uh, Sha'ir Tzadik uh, Hospital. Emergency teams initially treated the casualties at the scene, and the junction was blocked off there. Uh, Hebron, by the way, has been a, a scene of tremendous uh, terror attacks here, a lot of terror attacks in Hebron. This gear, you'll see here, this is at the same place. you see the man, he's dead there on the screen there. He is one of the attackers there. The other one did escape. Uh, he was using a knife uh, to attack, and um, but uh, very serious situation in Israel. As we have said before, the intifada that is actually going on in Israel is a distraction for the Jewish people. It is a very well calculated, very well thought out plan thing by uh, the uh, uh, the PLO, and um, there is definitely, without question. Uh, there is reasons for what they are doing. They, the, the PLO is uh, Mahmoud Abbas is working in concert with many different organizations, the Vatican being one. And as we have been watching these things unfold, we are also starting to see that not only is the Vatican involved in this, but we are also finding out that uh, the United States, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, many of the other countries there are definitely involved in this particular uh, uh, unrest that is going on. Uh, you, but the, it, is, it is one big, huge picture that is happening there. And there's a lot of different people that have a lot of different interest in Israel for different purposes, different reason there. And, uh, and, and, it, and like I said, it's only going to get worse. It is definitely spiraling out of control and uh, in the region there. Let's take real quick though, I wanna bring you uh, just for, for a recap here, a couple of different uh, prophecies here that we, can, that we can look at because what is happening in Israel is definitely prophetic uh, to say the very least. And I'd like to take you to Micah chapter four uh, here on, um, with the memory uh, online. It's actually www.mechon, M-E-C-H-O-N, 
uh, hyphen m a m r e dot org. Uh, this is where you can actually find the this this particular Bible passages here. I thought I was in the Hebrew English, but I'm not. Let me take you real quick to the Hebrew English version of this uh, is what I prefer to be in there. Let me go real quick to Micah. Here we go right here, Micah chapter 4. Uh, the reason why I want to bring this up is clearly it shows something that is happening to Israel. Many of you guys are aware of this already. Uh, and that is, one, in that day saith the Lord, verse 6, I will assemble her that is halted, and I will gather her that is driven away, and her that I have afflicted. This is the prophecy of the Israel returning to their homeland. And thou, Mig uh, Migdal Eder, the hill of daughter of Zion, and to thee shall it come, yea, the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. And so she's reestablished. But then we find in verse 9, a problem occurs. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? You see, Benjamin Netanyahu is not working as a king. Regardless if Mike Evans anointed him or not as king over Israel, it's not working because Israel had rejected God's way of leadership through Samuel the prophet. And they wanted instead a king to lead the children of Israel. And to be like the rest of the nations, but it failed. And so God is asking that. He also says, has thy counselor perished? And of course, it is a direct, direct point by the prophet that indeed Mashiach, which is Yeshua, would in fact be killed. So it's the, the question is challenged to the Jewish people there that pains have taken hold of thee as a woman in travail. Now God is showing them why these things are happening. Now, Keep in mind what you're seeing now in Israel. This is the beginning of a fulfillment of Micah's prophecy here. He said, see, as thy counselor perish, that pains have taken hold of thee as a woman in travail. See? Now, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now thou shalt go forth out of the city and shalt dwell in the field and shalt come even unto Babylon. There shalt thou be rescued. There shall the Lord redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies, which none other is Esau. We proven that many, many times by the, by the passage in Obadiah. We have shown that how Obadiah, uh, verse 16, fulfills was fulfilled by the Pope of Rome when he came and he drank on the holy mountain of Zion there in, right there in Jerusalem, on Mount Zion, in the upper room. And then as well, the following week, week they, they, they had communion service in King David's tomb. Special forces drove the Jews out of there. And uh, very, very serious things that are happening uh, in Jerusalem, and prophecy definitely unfolding. But what's interesting, it says that they will they will be driven out. They will they will go forth out of the city. Which city is that? Jerusalem. And there is a huge fight over Jerusalem. Mahmoud Abbas with the Antifada is now begging that the United Nations come in and put troops on the ground there to secure the people of. Uh, uh, of the Palestinian people from, as he calls it, the aggression of the Israelis. The Israelis are not aggressive. I mean, honestly, Mahmoud Abbas, have you no brains at all? Do you not realize they are, they are responding in the, the violence that you're doing to them? You have actually been very methodical in your ways, and you have been doing this to draw Israeli troops and soldiers away from the borders of Israel that protects Israel, and you've brought them to the center of attention here, as well as gaining, garnering world support in your plight, claiming Israel as the aggressor, when it's actually the Palestinians that are the aggressor in this case here. Um, and as we said before, not Palestinians. I often say Jordanians because uh, even though they've been living there for, for, for quite a number of years now, most people forget where they actually migrated from in the first place. Um, anyway, let's move on here. And, uh, and, and don't forget that Psalm 83 is something that has been going, brewing on for quite some time in regards to all of this uh, to begin with. All right, let's go right back now. Let's look at the, the, the chess match here. And you know what? Maybe, no, maybe we really should pull Psalm 83 up here uh, because Psalm 83, as I've said before, is not the war itself that we, are, that we are looking at. In Psalm 83, we are not looking at a war, but we are looking at a confederacy. And that confederacy is with verse 7, the tents of Adam and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarines, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, Philistia, with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also is joined with them. This is one reason why you're not going to see Assad toppled. Assyria, or Syria in this case, is going to be strengthened up just a little bit, but in the process it's going to be totally demolished uh, by, the, by the different 
fighting regimes in the area. And now the United States has joined into this as well, not working whatsoever with Russia to combat, combat ISIS. It's because why the United States is the one that armed ISIS. The United States is the one that armed the, the rebels there to overthrow the Assad regime. And Russia is refusing to allow uh, Basar Assad to be, gone, to be pushed out of this particular place. Coming in there, Russia has put uh, their own air base there, everything. Now the United States has stepped up the ante here in this chess game. The United States now has moved in, according to their estimates, 50 special force troops there. 50 special force troops that according to RT News is actually to be used as human shields. Now, ironically, according to the Kuwaiti Times, Kuwait claims that they are not telling Russia where the special forces are at. This is, this is only going to have grave consequences. The United States the Obama administration specifically is putting his own people in harm's way. And, he, and he's doing this intentionally because if they are killed, then it will only garner American support to come in and get involved in the campaign and fight with Russia. Do, is, it, is it really, a, do, they, do they really want a, an all out war? And Turkey and Saudi Arabia are both uh, threatening Russia as well. So you've got the Sunnis, which that's Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. These are all these Sunni-led areas. Iraq is Sunni against the Shias. And Russia backs the Shiites, which is Basra Assad's regime, which even though Syria is a majority a Sunni nation. And uh, you have Iran, which is a Shiite uh, nation as well. You have Hezbollah, uh, you have all these different Shiites that are fighting back and forth. And of course, the big issue is about the oil in this region. Uh, the Pope, of course, though, he only wants the war to secure for him uh, his desire. And that is that he gets a hold of Jerusalem for his own uh, purpose there. So that is why the coalition is there. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Edom, of course, is Rome. And God says he would deliver Israel from Babylon. Now, we reported the other day, though, thanks to Brother Chris there, that sent us this article there that in Rhodes, they're raising up this huge uh, colossal statue there, the Rhodes statue there, which is uh, for the worship of the sun god, being powered by the solar panels on it, uh, solely for that particular purpose. And uh, as I said, it's not an image unto the beast, but clearly it's kind of like a prefigure of it. I look at the, when I look at the image of the beast, one thing that really concerns me when we look at the prophecy about the image of the beast from the book of Revelation, where it says that he really breathes life into it. And I'm going to study that deeper for you guys, because when it says he breathed life into it, it only made me realize that what is the Antichrist to begin with? He is one that takes the place of of the true Christ, which is Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. And when Christ was there in the beginning and in working with God for the creation of all things on the earth, the one thing that they did is he formed a man in his own image. And when that man was laying there, that Adam, the humankind was laying there, he breathed into that body the breath of life. And it was in a plural. See, he breathed into that body, that plural form of God's own life, showing because why? It was both Adam and Eve in the same body. But the beast as well, they, they raise up an image unto the beast. And what do they do? The Bible says that he breathes into the image so that it, it lives. I'm just paraphrasing this, of course. But that has really got me concerned right there. Is it a metaphor of something or is it, could it even be, I only say this speculatory, could it be a, like a clone or something, you know, that Satan is doing and they breathe life into it. In other words, they bring something to life. I, I don't know. Don't know. Kind of getting off track. Sorry about that, guys. Let's, let's move on here. Uh, but uh, I want to go back into these article here. This one here is from the Kuwaiti Times as well. Um, let me, this is one that I wanted to bring up to you, though, real quick here. This is uh, from the Kuwaiti Times here. It just came out today. We are in an agreement that there will, be, there will certainly be no role for Bashar al-Assad. He added, he said that in recent talk, wait a minute, I'm sorry, didn't go, for, oh, oh, my, my apology, totally wrong, wrong, didn't get it the right place. 
Turkey, Saudi have warned Russia over a big mistake in Syria. Syria regime and new offenses as Putin blasts the U.S. Uh, of course, that photograph right there, this is exactly what's happening. This is why I say Dam Damascus will be a ruinous heap according to the prophecy. It's because the constant bombing and shelling, Russia bombing like crazy, and now the United States really pushing up the ante, it's about to really turn into a, a major problem there. It says uh, that uh, Turkey and Saudi Arabia yesterday warned Russia over the consequences of its intervention in Syria with uh, Ankara telling Moscow its bombing campaign in support of the regime was a big mistake. The two major uh, Sunni Muslim powers both support the moderate opposition in Syria and have been infuriated by Moscow's bombing campaign to prop up the regime of President Bashar al-Assad. Ankara is particularly concerned over the claims denied by Moscow that its bombing campaign has targeted anti-Assad rebels rather than the stated aim of Islamic State ISIS jihadists. Saudi Arabia and Turkey are in agreement on supporting the opposition in Syria. What is important is a political solution, Javier said. Uh, Regime forces backed by Russian airstrikes pushed on offensive in central Syria yesterday as the President Vladimir Putin slammed Washington for not working with Moscow in the conflict. Um, now you have to understand too what's going on, why are they bombing there in Syria, in the central Syria there. It's because ISIS had gained and uh, had pushed back the Assad forces out of that area. And so now Russia had to go in there and begin to do some bombing there to try to stop the ISIS uh, uh, onslaught there. Uh, he also goes on, like I says, Vladimir Putin slammed Washington for not working with Moscow in the conflict. Like I said, the U.S. will not even divulge where their special forces are. So if Russia in their bombing campaign hits them, it's going to be a major disaster. It's going to bring about a massive war in the region. It is a truly a chess match. Now, the United States did say that they're up in the northern part of the country. So basically, the reason why they're not pinpointing where the U.S. troops are is because the United States is trying to make a safe haven for all of ISIS forces to be able to come back, regroup, and hopefully Russia will not bomb and attack there. I don't know if Russia is going to play this game very long, though. That's the concern there. Russian warplanes launched at least 15 airstrikes to support government troops as they began a new Operation just north of the city of Homs, a monitoring group said Syria state television citing a military source said the army had begun a military operation in the north and northwest of Hamas province with the goal of restoring security and stability to the villages and towns in the area. Russia is making a big mistake, Turkish Foreign Minister Ferdin uh, Sunurlagulu told reporters after talks in Ankara with Saudi counterpart Adel al Jabair. Uh, what, what it does will bring no meaning or benefit other than delaying the transition process to help Syria out of the chaos, he added. We will continue with our warnings. We are in the agreement that there will certainly be no role of Bashar al-Assad, he added. He said that in recent talks with top Russian officials, Riyadh had told Moscow that Syria's crisis should be solved according to the 2012 Geneva communique which uh, envisages a political transition in Syria. Now, let me just let you know here, and you can pick the rest of this article up on our, on our, uh, on our um, Facebook uh, Israeli News Live page there. Just go to Facebook, type in Israeli News Live. It should bring you to the page there where you can see these articles. But Saudi Arabia actually was planning to attack Russian forces. And we're going to come bring up that article here in just a moment. In fact, let's just go straight to that article now. Probably do us good here. This is on RT News that was reported here. Uh, and the, the journalist there is uh, Finian Cunningham. Uh, he is the uh, journalist that wrote this article. It says, Obama's decision to send special forces into Syria is being widely viewed as a U.S. military escalation in the country. The troop dispatch also signals that the U.S. is trying to forestall Russian successes and wiping out Washington's regime change assets in Syria. In short, the U.S. special forces are being used as human shields, he says, to curb Russian airstrikes against anti-government mercenaries, many of whom are instrumental in Washington's regime, regime change objective in Syria. Now, remember, you notice it's kind of interesting. He called them mercenaries. This is exactly what Vladimir Putin called them in one of his address on RT uh, News as well. 
that was covered there that they were paid mercenaries. Who's paying them? As he said, whoever the highest bidder is is paying them. And of course, once they have control of the oil fields, which they do in many cases there, they're selling the oil on the black market. And as President Putin pointed out, why is there no sanctions on those that are actually doing this? Directly pointing the finger at the U.S. Obama administration. It says, first of all, we need to view a host of developments, including the hastily convened peace talks in Vienna as a response by the U.S. and its allies to gain changing military interventions by Russia. That intervention beginning on September 30th has not only dealt massive blows to the militants, it has completely changed the balance of forces to give Assad's government the upper hand in the war against foreign-backed extremists. That in turn has sent the U.S.-led powers trying to topple Damascus into disarray. Uh, recall the scattered reactions from Washington and its allies, including Britain, France, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, at first, Washington tried to rubbish Vladimir Putin's order to aid his Syrian ally with airstrikes as doomed to fail. Then there were overblown, unverified claims of civilian casualties from Russian strikes. Plus, there were American claims that Russian cruise missiles had gone widely astray, hitting Iran. There was also much, uh, much against over Russia striking moderate rebels instead of the Islamic State terror network. All such accusations encouraged with Western media amplification were designed to undermine Russia's military operation. Yeah, it's definitely true, but you have to remember, why would they think that Russia would not bomb the forces that are loyal to the United States that are trying to topple Assad? Well, Russia has made it clear they're there to protect Assad. They're there to keep him in power and to get him fully back in control. And yet Israel is gutsy enough to bomb also uh, the, the Assad's forces when one mortar shell crosses the border. Even though it may not be Assad's forces doing it, that's what they will do. Now the concern I have with this, being it's my own people there, is that what part of the government is willing to instigate a war with Russia? Now it's clear that Russia no doubt is, is backing those that are going to invade Israel to begin with. But to instigate the fight definitely is not something that we need to do. It will take God to intervene to protect Israel once this all breaks out, and it's about to break out at any moment. Keep in mind, if a confrontation between Russia and the United States takes place here in the Middle East, Israel will be one of the main targets that all the Arabic people that are against them will come up against them. And even though Turkey and Saudi Arabia sides with the United States and is against Russia, they hate the Jewish people as well. Turkey would love to attack Israel, but I don't believe Turkey will actually be involved in this particular attack, but clearly we are going to see Hezbollah from Lebanon. We're going to see Iran from, the, from Damascus invade Israel on the northern borders there. And this is the one reason why you have seen that Hamas in the Gaza Strip has held off doing their own attack in Israel with an all-out onslaught of missiles. They're only preparing as the Intifada gains momentum and they can continue to keep Israel in, a, in, in an uproar. They're only preparing while Israel is distracted with other issues. Then they'll come in for the kill. This is exactly what the devil would like to see happen. Let's move down a little bit further in the article. It says, another seeming knee-jerk response came from Turkey and a right-wing politicians and pundits in the U.S. which revived talks about the creation of safe havens in northern Syria, ostensibly to protect civilian refugees, but also tacitly and more importantly to give cover for rebel groups from Russia's airstrikes and Syrian government ground troops. You know, the only way you could have a safe haven to begin with would have to be for the militants. Why? Because most all the civilians have already left the country and are now in Europe and places uh, in the United States, etc. What is the purpose for this plan? What really is going on with all these things that are happening nonetheless? One thing I want to bring to your attention here, this was kind of a little interesting video that, uh, that, that, that a friend sent me here, and I wanted to share this with you as well. This was a protest that was being done, uh, brother posted there, uh, in um, uh, that this actually took place there in the United States at Nealis Air Force Base, protest against U.S. support of ISIS. 
And uh, this brother here is actually speaking there, and I'll move you along pretty quick here to, to get you into the thing there. But then they go out there, he takes you there to where the protest is actually happening. And, uh, and I was surprised to see this, but on the sign that they have there, they're blowing the shofar, they're, they stand for Israel. I do appreciate this so much here. But then he has a sign there that says, Russia for killing, or uh, thank you, Russia for killing ISIS. Uh, you'll be able to see this sign here as this brother here shares that with us there. You can look at that on your screen there. I don't know if you'll be able to read the sign once he, once he brings it down, but he's actually going to show the sign there, and they're thanking Russia for killing ISIS. Um, let me just kind of move you. There he goes, killing ISIS right there. He shows it there. Thank you, Russia, for killing ISIS. When will America make the same stand uh, or stop terrorism is what it says there. Then he goes to another sign there. They got looking for terrorists. Uh, go to the White House. <laughs> I thought that was just just uh, hysterical, uh, to say the least, uh, in, in all of this. Uh, one more article, though, I do need to bring to your attention. Let me go to that right away here. Uh, this is on, um, uh, I think this is United with Israel is where this is at. As uh, far as news, was one that actually reported. It says Iran's armed forces will respond decisively to any attack by the U.S., the Iranian defense minister stated in a response to remarks by his American counterpart that the military option remains intact should Tehran fail to comply with the nuclear deal signed in July. It's kind of wondering why all this is up on the board all of a sudden. Iranian defense minister Brigadier General Hossein uh, Degan stated on Saturday that his military would deliver a crushing blow to any act of war instigated by Israel or the U.S., the Iranian FARS news agency reported, our armed forces are always ready to give a response to the U.S. administration and the Zionist regime's mischief, Dagon stated. St stated. And uh, his warning follows remarks made by the Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Yalon and U.S. Defense uh, Secretary Ashton Carter in Washington last week at a joint press conference. Carter warned that if Iran does not comply with the nuclear deal signed with the six global powers, it will face an American military threat. He alluded to close cooperation with Israel. I'm under instruction from President Obama to make sure that the military option remains intact. And I worked very hard on that. And we brief our Israeli colleagues on that uh, from time to time, as we have for quite a long time, Carter said. Yolan spoke about Iran's nonstop attempts at harming Israel with the help of proxies, adding that the Islamic Republic also challenges the U.S. interests in the Middle East. Um, now, one thing, friends, let me just say this here in closing on our broadcast here. Um, it, is, it is definitely, without a doubt, it is very clear that what is going on in all of this here, we are definitely seeing biblical prophecy manifesting right before our eyes in every direction. Uh, I, we've, I've seen many, many cases already where Rome is involved both politically and uh, with the religious leaders of all the Arabic nations that are surrounding Israel. It is uh, a, a major catastrophe in the brewing, but prophetically, it's things that, are, that have got to happen. Uh, I find it kind of interesting, though, that the United States is finally stepping up to be an ally with Israel. And I have a feeling that the re only reason the United States is doing this is because now the, the interest that the U.S. has had in toppling the uh, Assad regime has been severely curtailed by Russia's presence there in the Middle East. Now, Turkey is threatening to get involved, as we mentioned here already. Saudi Arabia is threatening to get involved both against Russia to attack Russia. Russia has the backing of Iran, Hezbollah from Lebanon, and of course Turkey, though, has a military that is very powerful in itself, very much kind of equivalent to maybe what Iran actually has. And then the United States and Russia, two make major nuclear world powers. And then Israel is caught up all in the middle of this, and every Arabic nation would turn against Israel in a heartbeat. That's one thing that would actually unite them. But fortunately, thus far, for the United States, there is a major division between Sunnis and Shias. If they ever stopped battling each other, it would be a, a big issue altogether. 
But prophecy is definitely brewing. And things are not looking good right now. It will definitely take God's intervention for the people of Israel. Definitely. We can see the United States is trying to move their chess piece now. They're trying to position to get a foothold there in northern Syria. Interesting, but on the border of Turkey. Again, another way to be able to launch a ground invasion if the United States needs to do so. Russia actually has warned that that could happen. The U.S. may try to bring in a ground offensive. It's about the only way you're going to push Russia out. And I don't think you're going to push Russia out. I'm Stephen Benu. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Those of you that are on live stream, that if, if for any reason we've had technical difficulties, you can catch this later this evening on YouTube, on Israeli News Live on YouTube. We've actually changed the name of our channel there. It is now Israeli News Live, so you can catch the broadcast there. I'm Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.